Hey brothers and sisters, welcome to another time of Bible teaching. Uh, the last video I did was uh, about birth pains number one or part one. This is part two. In that first video, if you haven't seen it, you may want to go back and watch that one first because we show scripture by scripture how the birth pains are in tribulation. It's not what leads up to tribulation. Birth pains are in tribulation. I know it wasn't until a couple years ago that I really understood this. And um, most of the time when I understood prophecy, I just assumed that we were watching the birth pains around us and we're getting closer and they're going to get worse and worse until the time that the millennial kingdom comes in. Well, they are going to get worse and worse, but they haven't got here yet. Now, in Romans 8, I believe, Paul talks about the birth pains that they're going through at that time. Yet yeah, the spirit of the Antichrist was already at work and rolled around us. But the Antichrist won't be here until tribulation starts. Okay, there is a difference. Um, Jeremiah 30 was a big verse that we looked at. We looked at quite a few. What I want to do in this video is to go into Matthew 24 and look at the birth pains there, something we did not touch in the last video. And we're going to compare that to what we see in the seal judgments in the book of Revelation. All right, so you're really going to need two Bibles open. If you got your Bible, you want to be in Matthew 24, and I'm going to have the book of Revelation up on the screen. So let's do that. Let's get these Bibles opened. Slide that over a little, right like that. And I'm starting off in Matthew 1, and I have a reason for that. Okay, we want to talk a little bit about like this, how the book of Revelation is set up. I know I've done this before. Uh, read Revelation 1.1, 1, 1. the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this isn't even the revelation of John. He is the revelator. He is the one that gives us the revelation, but it's a revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to him. So this comes from God to Messiah. And then it's going to go to John, and it's going to go from John to the angels, which are actually the messengers the ones that were leading the churches. But anyhow, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to, to him to show his servants what, what things which must take place, that must shortly take place. Now, a lot of your preterists, the people that believe everything in prophecy happened in 70 AD, which that is a, how do I word it? That is a um, doctrine of the Catholic Church. The preterist view that everything happened in 70 AD and the book of Revelation has been fulfilled when the temple was destroyed. Why? Because there's a lot of stuff in the book of Revelation that doesn't paint a good picture for the Catholic Church. But if it all happened in 70 AD before the Catholic Church became Christian or supposedly became Christian, then it's not about them. You see that word shortly? It's interesting. Let's look at it. Let's look at what it actually means. We're going to come down here, and there we go, shortly. This word in is with, but see this word tachios? That word means speedily, quickly, quickness, speed. The other word is with, so you put them together, it's with speed. It's that when everything starts, when tribulation starts, it happens fast. It's not how long it's going to take before you get there. Um, any car nuts out there? Car buffs? Um, this is this tachyos word is where you get the word tachometer from. Does the tachometer tell you how long it's going to be before you get to your destination? No, it just tells you how fast that engine is turning. Let's go to Revelation 119. Just a couple things briefly. This is what John was told to write. Write the things which you have seen. Um, that's this first, part, first chapter, the vision, the things which are. John's writing in 90 AD, this is the church age, the letters to the churches, Revelation 2 and 3. And then write the things which must take place after this. So after what? After the church age. Go to Revelation 4.1. And how does Revelation 4 1 start? Am I in the right place? Nope, I'm in 1 1. My apologies. Let me do that again. Revelation 4 1. 
after these things. I looked and be women after these things. After what things? After the church age. Here is your rapture. It's not in chapter 12. It's right here. Chapter 4 and 5, John is sort of given a, and we are, a tour of heaven. And we're seeing what's going on in heaven. Okay? Now go to Revelation 6. In Revelation 6, we come back down on earth, and we're going to see the seal judgments happen. This happens at the same time, you know, and when after the tribulation, we're up in heaven as this is going on. It's just not written right together because that would have been really confusing. So now I have my Bible open to Matthew 24, and I'm going to read from Matthew 24. And we're going to look at these judgments. What's the first seal judgment here? Well, let's behold, I looked, and um, a white horse, and he who sat on had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. That's the Antichrist. When the Antichrist comes on the scene, notice it mentions he has a bow, but it doesn't say that he has any arrows. So when he conquers, it's going to be like through diplomacy, not through military might, possibly. So we back to Matthew, uh, start in verse 4. Matthew 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take ye that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And so that is the first seal. Okay, and this is not exactly, but you'll get it as we go on. What's the second seal? Another horse, fiery red, went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, that people should kill one another. And, and to him was given a great sword. So let's go back to Matthew 24. And we're picking up in verse 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. That word end is not like a final end. And it's tell us. It's the goal. What is the goal? To bring in the millennial kingdom. Messiah over and over spoke. The kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like. That's the millennial kingdom. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there's your second seal. Notice the nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We have like groups, ethnic groups that are fighting that aren't nations, we sure do. The third seal. Um, and he opened the third seal, and I heard a living creature see, come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures, a quart of wheat, for denarius, a denarius is a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for denarius. Do not harm the oil and the spices. What is this? This is it says it up here, it's scarcity. It's a, it's food shortages. Do we see food shortages setting up? We sure do. I'm telling you, put food aside. If it's a mistake, eat it. If we get raptured, oh my goodness, the people that come into your house and you've got freeze-dried foods, you've got this, you have some rice. And you're saying, hey, I know what you missed. I didn't miss it. I went to heaven. But here, I got food for you. And if I knew enough to give Lee food for you, you need to listen to what I say about what you need to do at this point. You know what I'm saying? So what happens when you people aren't eating right? Okay? You're getting sick. You know, you're susceptible to more disease because you're not eating. You're hungry. So let's read what else we have in Matthew 24. Um. The second part of verse 7, and there will be famines, pestilence. Hmm. Interesting. Earthquakes in diverse, diverse places. These are all the beginnings of earth pains. Hmm. Interesting. So next little. So I looked and behold a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Gap. And Hades followed him, and power was given to him over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger and death, and by the beasts of the earth. 
Um, a quarter of the earth. What's the earth right now? About 8 billion. A quarter is 2 billion people. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, the seal judgments ain't that bad. That's that's 2 billion people dying. That's bad. And it gets worse from there. Let's go back to Matthew 24, verse 9. And they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be murdered by all nations for my name's sake. And, and then many will be offended and betray one another, and they will hate one another. Hmm. Yeah. Can you, can you see the flavor? This is not perfect. Okay, I will give you that. It's not perfect. But we see it here. What's interesting, and you don't have a fifth and the sixth seal here in the book of Revelation, but come down in, back into Matthew and read verse 14. Actually, I'll, I'll skip over there. Let's do it this way. In case somebody doesn't have their Bible, they're Matthew 14. Did I say, oh, Matthew 14, I'm sorry, no, Matthew 12. <laughs> Matthew 24, 14. My apologies, I'm all over the place. Here we go. And the gospel of the king will be preached in all of the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Whose job is this? Is this us? Is this the church? See, when this is done and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. An end word is not end like it's over, it's finished, and it's done. Let's take a look at it real quick. It's Telios. But D is kind of interesting in the definitions. Think about it. When does the end come? When does the, it's a goal. Look at uh, D down here. The end to which all things relate. The aim, the purpose. This is the goal. What's the goal? If this is the end, like over with, done, the end that happens right here, before the trumpet judgments, before the seal judgments? No. Oh. Anyhow. So, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as the witnesses to the nations, and then the end will come. The end is the millennial kingdom. This is the 144,000 witnesses. They're the ones that are going to carry this out. So go now, back. let's go back to the book of Revelation, chapter 7. How does it start? After these things, after what? After the church age. So Revelation 7, we're going back. It's like we did in Revelation 4, 1 and 6. We went back to the beginning when we had the tour of heaven. I'm sorry, 4 and 5, we went back to the beginning. There's a tour of heaven. Six goes back to the beginning and what's going on on earth. But this one here tells you you're going back to the beginning again. After these things, after the church age. And you have 144,000 witnesses. And they are Jews. Okay? And they're going to be witnessing. Imagine what 144,000 Apostle Pauls are doing. And they're going to have protection. They're going to be sealed. How are they sealed? By the Holy Spirit. I challenge you to find any other way in the scripture which somebody is, is uh, sealed. And if they're sealed with the Holy Spirit, that means the Holy Spirit's here on earth during tribulation. He's not the restrainer. The church is. By the end of Revelation 7, let me make sure I find this. Hold on one second. Look at verse 9. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all the nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne of the Lord of God, clothed in white robes and palm branches in their hands. A lot of people believe this is the rapture here after the seal judgments. Is it? No. Tell me anywhere in Scripture that you have a rapture in the beginning of tribulation. You don't. This is the work of the 144,000. Chapter 7 is the entire seven years of tribulation. 
And you have several chapters like that. Revelation 12 is what happens at the midpoint of tribulation. Revelation 13 is an introduction to the Great Tribulation and it's Satan's forces. Revelation 14 is an introduction to the second to the Great Tribulation and what Messiah is going to do. Anyhow, the birth pains are during tribulation. Um, you know, it's going to get worse. You know, there's a chance, you know, if anybody's asked, and I spoke, and I don't believe that the rapture is going to happen on the great this spring. It can only happen on Rosh Hashanah. I know a lot of people are talking about how we're going to have this, um, what is it, the great American eclipse, the total eclipse going across the country. And it's the exact opposite of the one seven years ago and where we weren't raptured seven years ago. And everybody said seven years ago, everybody was saying that was a rapture. I'll tell you what, though. I'm not saying it's not biblical. It's a good chance that some things here in the United States might get worse. I don't think it's going to get real bad until the birth pains start during tribulation. But, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have a few things put aside for yourself so that you can share them with others and share Messiah with them. Anyway, thank you for watching. May God bless you. Have a great day. Take care.